quick. I have no time to explain. If you're dealing with any tension or tightness in the front of the ab wall or the hip flexor, you have to follow me fast because I'm going to show you how to relieve a tight psoas in 20 seconds or less. Your first step, get on the ground. Have a couple pads or pillows to rest your head on. Both legs atop one another. Take your bottom hand, find the top of the pelvis, slide it down close to the ab wall. Give a gentle push. If you feel a pulse, you need to move. Roll your body back, top arm and leg straight, roll it forward. You'll feel a nice stretch and release in the psoas region. And you're gonna do this roll for a minimum of 20 seconds, maximum of 60 seconds. And you ought to feel ah, nice and relaxed. Cool. Now what? How can we get these changes to stick for the long term? Must we stretch with reckless abandon? Do we have to rewire our brain so the psoas never does anything again? I think it's a lot simpler than that. You're going to learn the progression that I use with patients and clients to relieve psoas tightness for the long haul. The psoas has attachments with the thoracic diaphragm, your big breathing muscle. So if you're not emphasizing good breathing mechanics, you're not going to get long lasting results in getting that psoas to chill. Lie on your side with your back resting against the wall. Either get a big medicine ball or a foam roller to press between your bottom arm and leg. Have your head resting on a couple pillows or pads. Maintaining a three to four out of 10 pressure into the medicine ball. Reach your top arm and leg long, making sure that you don't arch your back as you do it. Hold this position and breathe silently in through the nose soft and slow through the mouth. Do this for five sets of five breaths, two times per day. You can progress this exercise by syncing arm and leg movement with the breath. As you inhale, reach your top arm and leg long. Exhale back to the start. You can alternate between these two positions for two to three sets of six to 12 reps. Once you've opened up some space and range of motion, now is time to challenge if you can maintain that position with a harder exercise. At the femur, the psoas flexes, AD ducks the hip, and externally rotates it. At the spine, it has two different actions. It's active if you end up flexing your back upward, but it also aids in spinal compression, which can promote an increased back arch in standing. So to really challenge our ability to relax the psoas, we need to drive extension, abduction, and internal rotation of the femur, and also maintain spinal position. Lie on your back with your feet together and knees apart. Have the hips be at 90 degrees and straighten the knees. This is going to put weight on the PSIS, which is the bony part that's at the top of the pelvis. Have your elbows bent and raise your arms up so they are beyond 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. As you do this though, make sure your upper back doesn't arch. If you get it right, you'll notice your entire back is flat against the ground. Do not make the mistake of forcing it by crunching or tucking the hips. Both of these are going to engage the psoas, which is going to limit your ability of getting that bad boy to chill. Maintaining that back position, inhale and lower one heel to the ground, keeping the knee out. Exhale, back to the start. Alternate legs, try two to three sets of six to 12 reps per side. Now the last one, which is also the most challenging, is basically actively creating that psoas release when you're on your knees and forearms. Have your hips and shoulders at a 90 degree angle. Make a triangle with your forearms. Your hands are going to make one of those cute heart emojis. Rotate both forearms down like you're pouring a drink out for your homies. Start sagged. You'll weight bear through three points, the kneecaps, the elbow, and the pisiform, which is this wiggly bone that's on the pinky side of your wrist. Looking straight down, take a silent breath in through your nose. On the exhale, 
exhale. Press your torso away from the ground by pushing through all three points. Now this is where it gets challenging. On the next inhale, put more weight onto your left forearm and your right kneecap. This will cause the opposite arm and leg to come off the ground. Reach your arm and your leg out, making sure that you maintain pressure and you do not sag or arch. If you're noticing that happen, you can make it easier by sliding your arm and leg on the ground. On the exhale, go back to the start. On the next inhale, you're going to switch to the opposite side. If you get it right, your abs should be cooking. If they're not, chances are you're not getting enough pressure on the forearm and knee. Try two to three sets of six to 12 reps per side, two times per day. It's not uncommon for people with a tight psoas to also present with an anterior pelvic tilt. Is this a bad thing? And are there mobility deficits that come along with this postural presentation? You can find out in this video right here because I explain everything you need to know about this and how to move better with it.